Hi boys and girls and welcome to Bible Time Travels. Today we are on trip 87. Wow, we were I think in the 60s back when we had to start quarantining. But we're going to read our passport before we begin. So let's see, we're visiting 1 Peter today and this verse comes from chapter 4, verse 13. Peter says, Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. So we're supposed to rejoice that we can partake of Christ's sufferings. I wonder what that means. That's what we're going to learn today. So who can tell me what it means to comfort someone. The theme of this book is comfort for suffering Christians. What does it mean to comfort someone? Think about that. It means to ease their grief or ease their trouble, um, to soothe them, to reassure them, just try to cheer them up and make them feel better. So then my question I want you to think about now is, have you ever comforted anyone? You think you've ever had the occasion to comfort anyone? Think about that for just a minute. I bet you have, whether you really think about it or not. Um, maybe you've been around a baby that was crying or was upset and you've tried to pat it and talk, baby talk to it and make it feel better. That's comforting a baby. Um, maybe you've comforted someone in your family who was not feeling well, maybe someone in a hospital, like a grandparent or someone that you visited and you give them a hug and you the fact that you go comforts them because that's encouraging to them, it cheers them up. So you probably have comforted uh, more than you realize. Well, today we're gonna visit some Christians who need to be comforted. And do you have any idea why the Christians in Peter's day would need to be comforted? Of course you don't, unless you've already read 1 Peter. So I want you to listen closely as we make this visit today and see if what you're thinking might be the reason they need comfort is correct or not. Pay close attention. Let's, before we travel, let's go over to our planet wall and let's find the general epistles and today we will be visiting 1 Peter, our general epistles. So I've already said epistles twice, so you know on our timeline we are still in the epistles. We'll be there until we get to the very last book of the New Testament. So with that, let's get started on our trip. Ready to travel. Let's see where we're going to land today. We landed in Asia Minor. We've been there before. Uh, Paul preached a lot there on his missionary journeys. <clears throat> we're going to visit another general epistle. Why are the letters that are not written by Paul referred to as general epistles? Do you remember, Audrey? It's because they're not written to any one person in particular, but they're written with the understanding that they are for the church as a whole, for all Christians. And who is this book written by, Riley? Peter, yes. He's one of the 12 apostles and the letter is delivered by Peter's companion, Silas. Bentley, what's the theme of 1 Peter? Comfort for the suffering Christians. And we're gonna find out today why they were suffering. As we check our GPS coordinates, let's first of all locate Jerusalem so we kind of know where we are uh, on this map. Then we find that Peter is likely writing from Rome, which is not shown on this map, but it's far off to the west here. He writes this letter to the Christians who are scattered all over this area of Macedonia, excuse me, of Asia Minor. I'm not sure where Macedonia came from. But anyway, he wrote to the Christians who were scattered all over this area of Asia Minor. 
But his message applies to Christians today as well, so we can learn from this lesson. Again, the theme of this book is what, Gabriel? Yes, comfort for suffering Christians. Many early Christians, back in Bible times, lived in difficult times, times of persecution. Many paid for their faith with their lives. But through it all, God knows all that occurs and his plans go beyond our current problems and troubles. Therefore, we must study his word and pray and learn to trust him. We must live with our eyes raised towards heaven, realizing that our home is in heaven and not on this earth. As we begin our journey, let's recall the things that we know about the author of this book, Peter. You may remember Peter is one of Jesus' 12 apostles. He was brought to Jesus by his brother, Andrew. Peter and Andrew were the first apostles chosen by Jesus. Peter was one of Jesus' three closest companions because we find him and James and John with Jesus on many occasions. Peter is the apostle who walked on the water to meet Jesus, but when he began to doubt and fear, he began to sink. Jesus reached down, rescued him, and said, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Peter's also the one who cut off the ear of the high priest's servant, Malchus, the night that Jesus was betrayed by Judas and arrested. Later that night, because of fear of being arrested himself, Peter three times denied knowing Jesus. When he remembered that Jesus had predicted he would deny him three times before the rooster crowed, he was so ashamed that he went out and wept bitterly. Jesus forgave Peter and he became a great leader in the spread of Christianity. But don't you know he did feel so ashamed after he had Jesus had told him there will be three times before the the rooster crows that you're going to say you don't know me you're not with me Peter did not believe that but it happened and then he was so sorrowful and he cried bitterly but as we said Jesus forgave him you might remember it's Peter who preached the first gospel sermon when the Lord's church was established on the day of Pentecost <clears throat> the law of Moses had been given to only the Jews but the law of Christ was made available to the Gentiles as well. And who are the Gentiles, Audrey? Yes, anyone who is not a Jew was a Gentile. Well, Peter's the one that saw that vision of the sheep filled with unclean animals, and this was his call to go and offer the gospel to the Gentiles so they could also become Christians. Peter suffered at the hands of those who did not accept Jesus as the Messiah. He spent time in prison expecting to be killed for his teaching about Jesus, but God sent an angel to him in the middle of the night and loosed his chains and let him out. Peter was with Jesus for about three years, and he saw, he saw nearly everything Jesus did, and he heard most all that Jesus said. So now Peter is writing to encourage Christians to live like Jesus. Learning how to live for Jesus from the man who lived with Jesus. Peter explains that suffering will purify our faith in Christ, much like gold refined by fire. He writes that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So he's just simply saying that we should keep on believing in spite of our circumstances. Because suffering and pain makes us spiritually stronger and closer to God. It refines us and purifies us. The prophets of old were persecuted and refined. They kept the faith through many horrible persecutions. If you went on our travels to the book of Hebrews, you'll remember we visited the Hall of Faith. This hall is made up of many, many people from Bible times who suffered because of their belief in God, but they were saved because of their great faith during times of persecution. Many of them died for following Christ or for following God. There were those who, because of their great faith in God, stopped the mouths of lions, survived the violence of fire, 
were chained and imprisoned. Others were scourged, which means whipped with cords, knotted with pieces of sharp metal. Some were beaten, others were stoned to death, and some were killed by the sword. All these people were severely persecuted, yet they kept their faith. They suffered and oftentimes died because of their belief in Christ. Peter addressed, addresses the issue that believers are to live a life of personal holiness as God's people, even during times of suffering and persecution. He teaches that all Christians are to expect suffering. It's normal for Christians to suffer persecution and even imprisonment and death. Peter writes his epistle to comfort and strengthen the Christians that are under or about to be under persecution. He speaks about the glory that will be theirs in heaven, which is reserved for those who suffer for the sake of Christ. Peter explains that in order for Christians to not be caught off guard, they should always be on alert. Alert, He says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. He goes on to say, resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. So we stay alert and we resist the devil by staying close to God in Bible study and prayer. He also writes that this epistle is to instruct them about living the Christian life. He says Christians should be like-minded, be sympathetic, compassionate, humble, and love one another. Peter exhorts every Christian to stay away from worldly pleasures and to serve the living God. And he also encourages us to be strong in our faith, removing any doubts. Peter adds, for the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. Remember that. That's very comforting. The eyes of the Lord watch over those of us who are trying to do what's right, and his ears are open to our prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. And that's 1 Peter 3, 10 through 12. Peter stresses that although Christians might suffer in this life, we will not suffer forever. This world is not our real home. Heaven is our real home. One day we'll live with God in heaven and share his glory. Compass point alert. Next two slides. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Jesus is our example, our pattern. He was a man of suffering, and we're more like Jesus when we endure suffering. Jesus is like a pattern of how we should handle suffering. He was kind and meek in his pain rather than loud and hateful. So just as we might use a pattern to create something, we need to let Jesus be our pattern when we suffer. Peter reminds the believers to be thankful for the privilege of suffering for Christ. He also reminds his readers to trust God for deliverance. When persecution comes, it's so important for believers to remain faithful to God and to trust in Him. We're going to look at some scriptures now that are found in other books of the Bible other than 1 Peter that talk about Christian suffering. This one is from Philippians 1.29. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. And then we see one, 1 Peter 3.8. For Christ also suffered once for sin, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. Jesus is the righteous, and we are the unrighteous. 
He's, his suffering and death gives us the opportunity to become righteous. And in that way, he brings us back to God. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If we suffer, we also shall reign with him. But if we deny him, he will also deny us. And that's from 2 Timothy 2.12. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So we're warned that suffering and persecution will come. And with that said, the good news is this. When God permits suffering, he also provides comfort. He always provides for us what we need. And when we suffer, he's there to comfort us if we will only trust in him. In 2 Corinthians 1.3, Paul says, God is the God of all comfort. Even in the Old Testament, Psalm 46, 1 and 2 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. When we're suffering, this is a good verse to remember. I can do all this through him who strengthens me. That's from Philippians 4.13. This is a comforting thought. After your season of suffering, God in all his grace will restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. From Romans 8.18, the pain that you've been feeling cannot be compared to the joy that's coming. So we just need to remember that any pain that we have while we're here on earth will be worth it when we get to heaven. Heaven will surely be worth it all. That's a song we sing sometimes. Christians everywhere need to thank God every day for our freedom to serve Him. Today is the day after Independence Day when we got our freedoms as Americans. We need to thank every God every day for that freedom to serve Him and worship Him as we want. What we can learn from 1 Peter is that we need to remember how Jesus suffered for us. And whether we have to suffer or not, we need to remember that if we do, we will become more like Jesus. So we need to take comfort in knowing that he shares our pain. Peter, while he was in Rome, was arrested and crucified within a year or two after he wrote this letter. And the Bible doesn't tell us, but records from history tell us that Peter requested to be crucified upside down because he didn't feel worthy to die like Jesus did. We learned from his death that Peter practiced what he preached. He taught us to live for Jesus and to keep the faith during persecution, even if it means death. Peter lived for Jesus, he kept the faith, and he died for him. So what is First Peter's theme? Again, Riley, comfort for the suffering Christians. And Bentley, why are the Christians that Peter is writing to suffering? They're suffering because they are being persecuted for believing in Jesus. This epistle was written by Peter, and what's the timeline event? Gabriel? Epistles. On this trip, we met Peter and Silas. And Audrey, tell us the theme one more time. Comfort for the suffering Christians. Okay. Let's look on our map wall now and see where it is that we visited. We found that Paul was over here in Rome. Not Paul, but Peter. Peter was over here in Rome when he wrote it, and he sent the letter way over here to Asia Minor. It was in this area that the letter 
was written to, but it applies to Christians everywhere, including us today. Okay, let's do our souvenirs now. We've got three today, so I'll draw out three names. Riley, Gabriel, and Bentley. Let's see what our souvenirs say. First one will be Riley. I must trust God no matter what happens in my life. I must trust God no matter what happens in my life. So, in order to trust God, we've got to have this close relationship with Him. And um, that will prepare us for when suffering comes to feel His closeness, to feel His loving arms around us. We've got to be close to Him. And how do we do that, Riley? Bible study and prayer. We talk to God. We let Him talk to us. That's how you get close to anybody. And that's how we get close to God. <clears throat> Gabriel. I got ahead of myself here. I must draw near to God through Bible study and prayer. That's how we do it. Bible study and prayer. We cannot trust a God that we don't know. If we don't know God through his word and through prayer, how are we going to trust him? How are we going to feel like he's our dear friend when we need him? Okay, Bentley. Suffering makes us more like Jesus. Suffering makes us more like Jesus. How does suffering make us more like Jesus, Bentley? Well, Jesus suffered for us, so he's our pattern for suffering. He taught us how to suffer. And you remember we mentioned in the while we were on our trip that Jesus didn't shout angry things and act crazy when he was suffering. He was very calm and quiet, and he's just a really good pattern for suffering. We're gonna put all these souvenirs in our heart because we want to remember them all of our lives. Let's see who's gonna do compass points. Audrey. Okay. Let's see what's in our box today, in our Bible. Oh, it's a good thing a girl got this. You might actually know what this is, Audrey. What is this? It's a pattern. It's a pattern for making aprons. Now, mothers don't sew as much as they did like when I was a girl. And I sewed a lot for my children, but I found that a lot of third graders have never seen a pattern before. If you open this up, it's got all this like tissue paper um, patterns for these different kinds of aprons. And you cut out the pattern and you lay it on your fabric and pin it on and you cut it. And it makes the, the this part of the uh, <clears throat> apron and then it's got the part that goes around your neck and the part that ties and it, it shows you, it gives you instructions and tells you how to cut these pieces out, how to even lay them on your fabric, how much fabric you need. And then you cut them out and you sew them together. And this tells you step by step how to do it. So it's called a pattern. Uh, it shows us how to make aprons. So what does this have to do with First Peter? What is the theme again, Audrey? Comfort for suffering Christians. Okay, and who is our pattern for suffer? suffering, how to handle suffering, Jesus. The, first, the book of 1 Peter points to Jesus as our pattern for suffering. He is our pattern for suffering. So that will go out in the hallway. Okay, now it's time to do our travel journal page. Riley, who's the author of 1 Peter? Yes, Peter. All the general epistles are written by the name that is on their epistle. 
and the date is about A.D. 63 to 64. And who did we meet, Bentley? Peter and Silas. Silas was just kind of mentioned. And Gabriel, what was the timeline event? Epistles. Let's see what God teaches us in this book. God teaches me in this book to live for him and to be willing to die for him, to, to be willing to suffer for him, to, even to die for him. Remember last year at VBS we learned about Daniel. Daniel was so um, strong in his faith in God that he was willing to do whatever. He was <clears throat> even willing to be thrown in a den of lies. We need to be like Daniel. What this book taught me about Jesus, Jesus is our pattern for how to handle suffering. Our pattern for handling suffering. And everybody say it together with me, the theme of First Peter. Comfort for the suffering Christians. Well, that's our lesson for today, and I hope that you'll be back next time when we'll go to Peter's second epistle, and we'll see who he wrote that to and what it was all about. Please be working on your books and themes. We're getting closer and closer to the end of summer, and I miss all of you and hope before long we can be together.